Coming up next on The Jeff Crilly Show, developing Gen Z talent so your corporation doesn't become a revolving door. We're going to talk to the author of At Risk of Greatness next. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Curley, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I am 59 years old, so I'm the tail end of the baby boomers. And I remember about 20 years ago, everybody was complaining about Gen X. And then along came the millennials and the focus shifted to millennials. And now it's the Gen Zs that are getting picked on by the older generation. But to talk about Gen Z and why they're such a unique generation, Carlos Campizo, he is the author of At Risk of Greatness. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, Jeff. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, it's an honor to be here. And uh, yes, let's start by saying why is it that Generation C is important. They are already about 30% of uh, the global population. They're the largest generation in history, and they will become 30% of the workforce by 2025. That's critical mass, and it'll only grow from there. Sure. And I would say one thing that makes this generation different is the, the parenting style of their parents. Um, I have to confess, uh, I, I kind of spoiled my kids. I think they're very hardworking, but um, these young people were given ribbons and trophies for showing up, and so grit is is not something that each one of them has. And when they go to the workplace, and then all of a sudden they have maybe a, a boss they disagree with, or they they fail at an assignment, um, many of them are not up to the job. Absolutely, and they're up to the job. The thing is that we need to communicate with them in a way that they're used to where they live. And, and that to me is what's very, very important. A lot of corporations are using old methods, old technologies to assess and develop them, and we need to meet them where they are. Um, and that for us is now, you know, the metaverse and gaming, gamification, video games. There's, there's just some different terms that uh, go to it. Uh, I know that uh, myself, I should have been working and playing more video games with, uh, with my Gen Zs. I have two of them, they're uh, great adults. However, we need to meet them where they are. And that's where the way we're doing it is through VR and gamification to stop that revolving door. Sure, and we're gonna talk much more about that in a minute, but I wanna talk about your book. We're gonna put the cover up on the screen, At Risk of Greatness. Uh, I love the title. I mean, when you, when you hear At Risk of Greatness, people say, well, what's wrong with being great? Why wouldn't you wanna be great? We all wanna be great. I think we're all destined to be great. You know, that's, uh, you know, God given. And the, the reason for the title is because we're, we're developing Gen Z talent across all the spectrum. So we just talked about the ones that are in the workforce or will be entering the workforce, but there's also about 18 million uh, at-risk youth between the U.S. and Mexico. And let that sink in because that number is astronomical, in my opinion. And how are we going to make sure that we tap into that untapped talent to make sure that we don't leave anybody behind? And so that's one term that we use for them, at-risk youth. And I think they are at risk, but of greatness if we channel them correctly. And for me, that's the intersection of art and technology. In this age of acceleration of technologies, uh, yes, AI and automation is very important. However, we need to focus to avoid competing with machines in what makes us human, and that's the arts. The arts that can help us develop 21st century skills like curiosity, critical thinking, creative thinking, collaboration, and uh, communication. And Carlos is a very talented speaker. Let's go ahead and show it's real. I'm a 
left my corporate job to go social venture. Take risks, you know. If it doesn't, if it doesn't pan out the way you want it to be, you, you're going to have learned a lot. The true risk that I see is that we end up thinking like machines, because then how do we differentiate ourselves? We can't. Focus on developing 21st century skills. Curiosity above all, because human integrity is key when asking questions. The important thing is to use all of those talents that, that we've accumulated as leaders. The, the more important one, I believe, and the pandemic has shown a bright light on it, is character. Because I'm sure that everybody watching has the capacity to lead, has the commitment to lead, but the character, uh, that's a tough one. And it's being challenged more and more, and will be challenged more and more, particularly with the advances on artificial intelligence, Wow. I, I know uh, chat GPT is all over the news right now, and I think we're just beginning to understand its capabilities. What does that mean for Gen Z in terms of the talents that they need to develop? Uh, not only for uh, Gen Z, Jeff, it, what it means for all of us. And what it means is I'm an optimist, so I think that chat GPT should be used widely to augment our cognitive abilities, which is ultimately what machines are here to do. And, and that's why in, in my speaker reel, I was saying, machines are very good at finding answers, but we need to ask the questions. We need to ask the questions from an ethical standpoint and to make sure that the answers are going to advance our human condition. So uh, hopefully I'm giving you an answer. The yeah. thing is we need to learn how to use uh, uh, tools like ChatGPT, which, which is uh, you know, a, a fraction of what AI represents. That's a generative a AI. Sure. Uh, and will we get to general AI or not? I don't know. I don't think that uh, we'll get there in my lifetime, in our lifetime. So we need to use those tools to augment our cognitive abilities. Absolutely. Sure. I know one of the criticisms about chat GPT is the college essay that, <laughs> and I, I've, I've used it. I said, uh, chat GPT, write me a best man speech. And it did. And I said, make it funny. And it did. And make it more conversational. And it did. And as soon as that happened, I said, oh my goodness. I mean, original thought uh, could be on the verge of extinction if we go down that slippery slope. So what's, what's your view on chat GPT? Absolutely not. You know, uh, again, those are tools built by humans to help us augment our cognitive abilities. You probably saw a concept that I borrowed from biology, which is coevolution. Species have helped other species evolve and become a better version of themselves. So my view is that we've made machines into their own species, but ultimately they will help us coevolve and be a better version of a human being without a doubt. Now, it's not gonna be uh, without some growing pains that we're gonna get there, but eventually we will, we will get there. And an example that I give is, uh, some of you watching probably used a PDA in the form of a Palm Pilot. Well, that was a far cry from a true personal digital assistant. Uh, in my book, I also indicate that there's a smart entrepreneur there, or many, several of them, working on having a true personal digital assistant, a digital assistant that's gonna help us safeguard our relationships, uh, ultimately use, make, use, make better use of our time and really work for us, not for the corporations that uh, might be uh, providing some of those tools for us. We've got some video of his gamified talent development solution. Tell us more about this. What are we looking at here? Uh, what you're looking at is a, a virtual reality uh, world immersive uh, not on first person, because we don't need goggles. Uh, that's a first person VR. We're doing it in third person. So through an avatar, you can enter into a virtual town and then we have developed mini games in that town. So while Gen Z plays those mini games, we're assessing and we're helping them eventually develop uh, basic skills built on these five C's that I mentioned. And those basic skills or soft skills, power skills, 
are the ability to act, ability to adapt, and potential to learn. And why those three? Because those have a direct impact on any enterprise's productivity, engagement, and retention. And that retention is what is becoming a pain now for corporations and will continue to be if we don't use the right tools and we meet them where they are and where they live. Sure. Tell me what a good client looks like for you, Carlos. Who, who are you looking to reach? Right now we're piloting still because we released a beta on the App Store and on Google Play, but we're piloting with enterprises uh, to make sure that once we develop the final commercial product, it's going to be a tight fit and it's going to serve their purposes. So right now we're focusing on small, medium-sized business uh, to pilot it and we know for sure we have some wrinkles to iron out and you want to uh, iron those wrinkles while they're small and before they sure. become too big. Well, it uh, seems like that old expression, if you can't beat them, join them. I mean, there's no way you're going to beat chat GPT. You're not going to beat AI. It's around. The Gen Zs are around. And so you got to figure out a way to embrace it. Absolutely. That ship has sailed mm -hmm. and uh, that trend is not going to reverse we better get used to it and make the most out of it. Because Gen Z also has a lot of very good traits that we need to recognize, which is their uh, innate uh, instinct for protecting our planet. We know that we've endangered uh, our species by doing some things that are quite frankly harmful to our planet. Uh, I know that I growing up wasn't thinking about that when I was thinking what corporation am I going to work for or what products am I going to buy. They're very good at it and we need to recognize it because that's the only way in which we can, again, advance our human condition, which is ultimately what this is all about. Sure. Okay, final thoughts. What would you like to leave people with? Uh, be curious. You know, uh, we were born with it. That's a trait that we all have. And unfortunately, the education systems and oftentimes the parents uh, tell kids not to ask that many, that many questions. Be curious and keep learning, keep growing. Uh, we need to be always learning and always trying to grow out of our comfort zone and adapt to the 21st century. Outstanding. You've been an amazing guest. We're going to end with the website, which is cosmosway.com. The great Carlos Campizo. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeff. I greatly appreciate it. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.